It is Brent Daniels, and I am excited about this Let's Be Real special episode. Now, here's the deal. My guest on this, Brian Ponciano, is raw. He drops a lot of F-bombs. He is cursing. He is being real. He comes from the streets of L.A., and he has brought himself up to owning right around 100 units and he started with wholesaling to build up his business this is an excerpt of a really long interview but in the in the um and the idea of keeping this so that you get the most meat and potatoes out of this video we shortened it we got the best stuff out of it and here it is check it out Let's let's get uh, let's get meat and potatoes. Yes. So you started out uh, door knocking and finding wholesale, mm -hmm. right? And then you started flipping. That is correct. Right? You and Chris? Uh, no, no, separately. So initially, I started off wholesaling, as I mentioned, with that first investor. Yep. Uh, Two thousand and eight happened, and I lost my ass like everybody else did. Yep. Went back to corporate America for a year and said, "Fuck this, I'm never going back." So yep. at that point, I started a band design company. Got it. And the purpose for the band design company was to make money while I was, you know, while I needed to survive. Yeah. But also to give me around other investors. Got it. So as I eventually got through there, I got back into the wholesaling aspect of it. And I did. I wholesaled for probably about five years. And, you know, one thing that I do want to put out there, everybody always asks me, how did you get your deals? How did you get your deals? How did you get your deals? I networked. Mm -hmm. I, and honestly, I didn't send out yell letters. Uh, eventually, I stopped door knocking. Eventually, I stopped doing all of that. Yeah. People were just bringing me deals from the network that I created. Right. And that's something that as a newbie, you should be focusing on creating your So you had the buyers. Deals. I had the buyers. That is correct. They found the deals. People brought me deals all the time. Yeah. Constantly, constantly brought me deals. Yeah. Because they knew well, that Well, you make the analogy. You made a, a, a great analogy that I really like is you can go you can get drugs from your friends or you can get drugs from a drug dealer right? that is correct because of because of growing up in the hood right i said you can either get drugs from a drug user or you can get drugs from a drug dealer mm -hmm. and a drug user in this analogy would be the homeowner right this is somebody that only has a very limited amount of the substance that you yeah. want what i did is i i, I um, networked with other drug dealers which in this case was other people that were in the industry right so it could have been other wholesalers yeah. it could have been other buyers it could have been agents it yeah. could have been lawyers it could have been other people that are surrounded with real estate yeah. that that you know even other wholesalers mm -hmm. there was times where i would call them up and be like hey man what you got blah 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 oh shit, i just locked up this one deal mm -hmm. i didn't even get a chance to do anything you know here's the here's the specs of it and here's what i got it for perfect yeah. Yeah. so i knew that they were even other buyers other other uh, buyers i would reach out to them and be like hey man what did you got what do you have here oh man i just locked up this property but i got this other one that's a much bigger bigger profit so can you just wholesale this one off for me and just give me my money back or to you know make a little bit of money so yeah that's that's all i did is in that analogy i went for the drug dealer not the right. drug user okay. which was somebody that was surrounded by properties and then you start flipping and, and then i then eventually i moved into flipping and then yeah. you got up to 15 flips at one time and i was doing 15 flips at and one that's time. a nightmare that that is a um <laughs> yes yes that's a job it's yes. a job is what it is it's a it's a very high paying job it's right. a very rewarding job you know you're able to create all these things for all these people my title companies my my contract people uh everybody that worked for my contractor everybody that wasn't involved with it my lenders my private money lenders everybody got paid mm -hmm. everybody was making money and i was adding a lot of value to it but it was a lot of moving parts right and eventually you know you got to be careful what you wish for mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't know what you don't know and when you're first getting started you're like oh, i want to be flipping 20 houses at one time of course but if i could be careful what you wish for right now mind you i had a business system so everything that i did was my my time was very very little uh, needed in each one of the units meaning that i saw the property once so it took about half an hour or so i walked through the property yeah that's yep. fine signed the paperwork yep. then i would go check the property inspect the property every you know few weeks or so mm -hmm. when my contractors needed another draw yeah and that was it and at the end i inspected it again gave them all the rest of the stuff had to sign all the paperwork mm -hmm. and move on to the next one Got so it. even though it was very simple per 
as you multiply that times 15, mm -hmm. that's a lot of freaking stuff coming in. And I, dude, my house was a revolving fucking circus, bro. Constant people. Like, seriously, if you were at my house two years ago, you could just sit in my living room and just run a camera. The characters that were coming in and out, title companies, lenders, contractors, everybody that yeah. was just coming in and out yeah. was a freaking circus. Yeah. And then eventually I said, you know what? This is not doing anything for me in the long run. Mm -hmm. This is good and I'm making money right now, but I'm only making money right now. Yeah. This doesn't help me or my mm -hmm. kids further down the line. And I realized that I kept on running in the hamster wheel that you called it earlier. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the next deal, I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, I locked up quite a bit of money from private investors that I was paying them an interest rate on. Yeah. So if I wasn't flipping properties, I was paying them interest with not making any money. Yeah. And that just wasn't good business. Yeah. So it forced me to continue to. And eventually I was like, man, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm juggling plates. Mm -hmm. And I feel that at some point, if any of this momentum shifts, all of these plates are going to come crashing down at once, not just one at a time, yeah. but the whole thing crumbling at once. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. So I started talking to mentors and I started talking to other people that were kind of had those situations and they all led me back into buying and holding. Yep. You know, and, and I run a show, which we're going to have you on, on our show here. Yep. Uh, it's Flipping Fridays. And one of the taglines that we have with Chris at the end when we sign off is you want to make sure you flip for cash, but you also want to make sure you hold for wealth. Yep. Because you, you're flipping, you, whether you're, you're flipping flip. a contract. Flip for cash, hold for wealth. Flip for cash, hold for wealth. So whether you're flipping a contract as a wholesaler, mm -hmm. whether you're flipping a property as a, as, as a fixing flipper, mm -hmm. you're constantly flipping for money, but you need to start holding some of these things for long term wealth. Mm -hmm. So eventually I, I, I moved into, I bought my first uh, single family house here. Then I bought my second single family house. And then I was like, you know what? I don't like doing this onesie twosie stuff. Okay. Like, this is taking way too long. Yeah. How can I speed up this process, right? Yeah. And at that point, my good friend Corey Peterson was getting into multifamily, mm -hmm. and he, he, me and him had built an awesome relationship because we met through our bandit signs, which once again goes back to creating that network. Yeah. And he was like, oh, bro, check this out, man. Let me teach you the stuff that I'm doing. Let me teach you how, how this is going to me. I used to be the fix and flip guy just like you. Let me show you the new way. And when he did, it just opened up my eyes mm -hmm. to, to just the possibilities out there. And I went to the seminar by this guy named Marco Koslowski, and he said something that changed my life. He said, why are you going to bust your ass off to get a $10,000 check mm -hmm. where you can bust your ass off and get a $10,000 a month? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, that makes a whole lot more sense. You know, I'm able to work once, and yes, it's a harder level of work. Yes, it's a higher level of sophistication. Yes, it's a higher longer. level of money. Yes, it's yeah. a longer-term play. Mm -hmm. But... Man, if I get this, it's going to put me in a whole different area. Yeah. So instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like right now I'm about to close on a deal here at the end of the month, which is going to put me at about 100 units. 100 it, units. Yeah, 100 units. It's, it, well, it's going to be like technically it's like 97, 98 or mm -hmm. something like that, right? That you own, control, what yes. is it? Like All you of have ownership? <laughs> All of the above, yeah. 100 units. 100 units. So you go from gang bang in LA Mm -hmm. to selling things door to door at companies, mm -hmm. just cold sales, selling all gizmos and gadgets straight from China, yep. to door knocking for deals, yep. wholesaling, mm -hmm. right? To getting, now, wholesaling was kind of give you your nest egg or no? Did it give no. you enough money to be able to flip? No, because I was an idiot. Because okay. I didn't, I didn't have a long-term plan. Okay. And this is what I'm hoping that your, your your listeners and that your students get from this. Okay. Is that you should always be looking further down the line. Absolutely. As a wholesaler, it was like fuck it. This month I made five grand. This month I made ten grand. This month I made twenty grand. Let me go do this. Let me go do that. Let me go. And the the more faster, larger amounts of money come in somehow the harder it is to keep track of that money right you know you're just like ah it don't even matter yeah um so no i wish i if, if i was smart enough mm -hmm. i would have been able to now what what wholesaling did for me though was it built my reputation right so it allowed me to learn what a real deal was versus a crappy deal All right because had i had that's money, huge. huge 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 had i had deal money or no or deal. access to money when I first started, I would have bought a oh. bunch of deals that were not even. That's good. the learning curve in this business. Deal or no deal, yep. and how big of a deal yep. is it? Yep. You know, because I've, I've, I've gotten deals. It mm -hmm. was a deal, 
And then I found out I sold it to somebody that sold it for 40 grand more, <laughs> right? On top of what I that, sold it for. That is correct. Once you figure out deal or no deal and how big of a deal is, then you understand how to make the most out of every deal or how to um, you know, put it in, decide which path you want to go. Do you want to hold it? Do you want to flip it? Do you want to wholesale it? What do you want to do? Do you want to partner with somebody on it? These types yeah, of Yeah, and my you know, my goal when I was flipping was or I mean when I was wholesaling was simply to get to flipping. Right. For whatever reason the idea of flipping the no, house it. was like yeah. major in my head. Well, it's you're the boss, it's the shows, it's HGTV. All that stuff, man. All it's, that you get to stuff. show people the before and afters. And by you get to walk through on <laughs> social media and show everybody by the what way, you're doing. If you guys are gonna get into fixing and flipping. Watch the shows on TV and do the exact opposite. Oh, of course. Man, my very first flip, I did everything that they did, like yeah. going in there with the paint and the landscaping and choosing all the tile and choosing all the paint right. and choose fuck no. that, dude. I did, you know, I did, you know how many? I did that one, yeah. one time. After that, I learned my lesson yeah. and I just hired a GC. Yeah. And, but eventually, it became, you know, I could continue hustling and hustling and bustling and working and working for money, and. Obviously that I didn't know how to manage my money. Obviously I didn't know how to create a nest egg, which mm -hmm. is what you teach your students, yep. which I would highly suggest create yeah. a nest egg, yeah. even if it's just for holding costs. Yeah. You know, cause when I got into flipping, I wasn't using any of my money. Right. So I was using hard money lenders and then I was using private money for sure. the gap, which yep. is a down payment plus the holding cost. Right. So I didn't need any of my Improvements? money. Improvements? Did yeah, they pay yeah, improve? They, they, so they put the, just to explain to everybody that's not sure, he would get somebody that was a money partner to put the down payment to pay for any kind of holding costs that you had, which is typically what you have to pay, the interest you have to pay to the private money lender, and then also the repair and fix up costs. Yep. So he had somebody cover that, and then he would find the deal, he would manage the deal, he would sell the deal, and you'd split it. What was the split? Actually, I would just pay them a, I would just pay them a percentage. You would so pay them interest on, my, on their money? I would just pay them interest on my money. Okay. And, and I would not suggest you do that if you're rarely getting started. Right, no. My very you first deal, I rotation. split percentages, yeah. just because you didn't know. Right. My very first two or three deals, I split percentages because right. I didn't know. Yeah. Once I knew, okay, I can make this, I can pay my investors a 10% return, a 12% return, whatever, mm -hmm. I knew that that's what I can give them, I can I can give to them. Got but, it. you know, I did, what did help me though was, and, and you know, now that I think about it, I did have a small nest egg mm -hmm. from wholesaling, which was about $25,000. There you go. What that did for Wholesaling me, is a cash machine. It, it is, is a hitting a lottery. It is like a scratcher ticket with like 30 grand or whatever it is per deal. I mean, gonna, it is. I mean, that's I'm how tell you, you guys right now. If I ever need a quick $5,000, yep. guess what I'm going to do? Gonna I'm going to wholesale something. Yeah. That's, I mean, that has always been and will always be. Hey, fuck, if I need some money because of whatever, my, mm -hmm. I just bought this new multifamily, but it's taking longer to, to get to the point where it's cash flowing or, right. or whatever, whatever, whatever. And I need to make a five, 10 quick, and one time, it was like, I don't know, sometime last year or something, because I was shutting down all my flips. Everything just, uh, one deal didn't close, and it was like two, three months when I didn't have any deals closed. Mm -hmm. So uh, by the third month, I'm like, fuck, man, I need to come up with like 20 Gs by the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Guess what I did, guys? I freaking doom, 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 wholesale, wholesale, wholesale. Perfect, 20 Gs, there we go. Yeah. But it, it all comes from looking further down the line, and I did have that nest egg, which allowed me to put in for earnest deposits, yep. and which allowed me to put in for down payment. Sometimes sure. I needed to put in a down payment before I could get the money lender in there. Sure. So I knew that I had a money lender. This is a there. flip. This is for a flip. Yes. Not a wholesale. Not a wholesale. Right. So I was at, so now I, I'm buying properties from wholesalers. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know, you need two, three, four, five thousand dollars in earnest deposit. So yeah. obviously that needs to come out. Yeah. And then I get money from a hard money lender and he says you need a fifteen thousand dollars down. Yeah. Well I can put that for my money and then when I got the the investor's money then I would replenish my money. Got it. But that nest egg helped me mm -hmm. help me move from deal to deal to deal and that a lot of that came from wholesaling. Love it. And then you know now and now you're multifamily. Now you got a hundred units multifamily. Man, now we're about to. Now you're sourcing units. deals. Yep. You're getting people bringing you deals. Yep. You've got people that are coming to you with money to invest with you because you find these deals and because when you buy them and you get them all fixed up and you put the tenants in them, all of a sudden now they're worth significantly more. Right, and great. then they get refied out of their property. They get their money back, their principal back, yep. and then they can do it again. They can. Yeah, I'm looking to again. do that with my first one. So my very first apartment complex deal, um, I bought. The, I got seller financing from the seller. I talked to a good friend of mine. I said, Hey, I need X amount of money 
uh, here's what I'm willing to do for you and we're going to split the profits. And with that particular guy, I gave him percentage of ownership. Sure. Nonetheless, though, we've got to the point now where here within the next few months, I'm going to be able to refinance our also his original money out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to refinance from the loan that we got seller, seller financing to a, a long term loan. And then we'll be cash flowing even more than we're currently cash flowing yeah. right now. Now, when you get traditional financing on these units, mm -hmm. are they just, I, I mean, are they just looking at the asset yes. and lending on the asset? It's called asset-based lending, right? which is something that- So they're not looking at your personal credit score and how much money you have in the bank and all these things. Nope. They're looking at how much is, the, what is this property producing income-wise? What is it worth if it were to be resold, mm -hmm. right? And then they do an appraisal and they give you a percentage and, and of- the value that. on multifamily is worth on the actual income coming in. So it's not as your NOI right. net operating. Yeah. Account. And what that does for us is that allows us to do force appreciation. Yeah. So I don't I don't give a fuck what my neighbor sold his property for. I'm selling it at this price because this is how much money it brings. Right. And every single market has a different cap rate right. that they based off. Yep. Most of my most of the stuff, stuff that I do is in smaller towns, yeah. which means that we have about a 10 cap. Mm -hmm. So to make numbers easy for people, if my property is bringing $100,000 NOI at, at the end of the year, mm -hmm. meaning that after all the money that it makes minus all the expenses, we're having in $100,000 yep. at a 10 cap, my property is worth a million dollars. Got it. So for every dollar that I save, mm -hmm. for every dollar that I that I raise the rents yeah. or whatever, yeah. I'm now raising ten dollars worth right. of value on my property based on the rehab amount. And, yeah. and what makes it even better is that it creates passive income. Right. Because you have you know you have your friends and family and wife or whatever. I have my friends and family and stuff that I like to do and traveling and everything yeah. else. And you can't do that while you're working. Right. But you can do that while you're building passive income. And that's what rich that's what real real wealth is yeah not having a shit ton of money in the bank yeah. but having money coming in every single month where you yeah. don't have to work yeah. and having a tangible asset that you can one day sell or pass to your kids love your it. grandkids or whatever the hell mm -hmm. that is got it love it that's the strategy wholesale it, it, this is if you have nothing and i get it if you if, if, if people want to most people don't right and even if you have something i would suggest you start wholesaling 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 gives you the amount the least understand how to figure that out uh i'm gonna skip i've done it but i don't like the, the the next step which is typically flipping i think you can totally skip that and you can start sourcing multi-family opportunities and you can you can reach out to Brian. You can reach out to you know people around the country that have experience with this, and you can kind of get some guidance on how to put those together. Now, Do you I want would, to? Re I would suggest real quick, just uh, on the flipping side. Of it. I know you don't like the flipping, yeah. But to me, flipping is my was my first step into okay. raising private money. There you go. So wholesale, flip, flipping. raise private money. Get into exactly, multi, and multi if you're doing the flipping, don't Love be stuck it. for flipping to the, for the profits. Yep. Do it to learn how to raise private money and how to how to get your investors to go in and learn how to I make an that. investment. I and love that. You can scale it up to multifamily. Come on, awesome, awesome, brother. I love it. I love it. So, how do people get a hold of you? People can. How get do a hold people of that see this that are interested in maybe investing get a hold sure. of you? Well, you can reach out to me at Instagram at Cashflow Creator. Um, my Facebook is at right at the 5,000 people, so yeah, yeah. you can you can search for me on there, but find me on Instagram at Cashflow Creator. Um, if you guys like this content, make sure that you follow me and my business partner at AZ Flip Guys. And if you're on Facebook, facebook.com backslash AZ Flip Guys, where we do a show every single Friday called Flipping Friday, and we're gonna have our good buddy here, Brent, Woo. on the on the next show. But we have literally covered every single topic yeah. from starting, door knocking, yep. wholesaling, raising money, uh, private money, hard money, shit. My last two multifamily deals, I literally whooped out the whiteboard mm -hmm. and knocked out exactly what we're paying, what we're, how we're raising, what we're giving to our investors, how much money we're looking to make, what those percentages and splits are looking like for anybody that has any interest in there. But yeah, if you're interested in investing in multifamily, give me a call because we got a lot of deals out there, man. We got yeah. a lot of deals out there. Awesome. Raw and real right here. <laughs> Brian, Appreciate thank you so much. This. Thank you. All right, guys. See ya.